You know, the thing with dictators is that they live in denial. They like to believe that their regime is prosperous, that their policies are promising, that their subjects are perfectly happy. One such dictator ruled the Philippines for two long decades. His name is Ferdinand Marcos. Earlier today, his son and namesake took the oath of office as the president of the Philippines. Ferdinand Marcos Jr. He made global headlines and wasted no time in telling the world that he represents the biggest electoral mandate in the history of the Philippine democracy. The press wasted no time in reminding the world about his father. Most headlines read, Philippines' new president is a dictator's son. But can you blame them? For many, the name of Ferdinand Marcos means brutality and abuse. Marcos Sr. was a notorious man. He imposed the martial law. He maintained absolute control over the media and the courts. Under him, dissidents were tortured. Political opponents were murdered. Ferdinand Marcos was booted out of the Philippines, overthrown by a people's revolt. That was in the year 1986. Marcos Jr., or Bong Bong, as he's called, began his political career while his father was still in office. Now, Bong Bong is British educated. He went to Oxford. In 1981, he was elected vice governor of a province called Ilocos Norte. Within two years, he became governor, congressman, and then senator. In 2016, he ran for vice president, but he lost. He's now 64 years old. Earlier today, he placed his hand on the Bible and took oath of office as the 17th president of the Philippines. With him was his wife and three sons. Si Ferdinand Romuald at wikain asing ang aking mga tungkuling ang aking talaga ang aking sarili. Nabu, natuto pa rin ko na buong katapatan at sigasig ang aking mga tungkulin ang aking mga tungkulin bilang Pangulo ng Pilipinas bilang Pangulo ng Pilipinas In his inauguration speech, Marcos Jr. paid a tribute to his father. He also met the outgoing president, Rodrigo Duterte. It will be his legacy that Marcos Jr. will be carrying forward. So what exactly is he inheriting? In the week leading up to his inauguration, the Philippines shut down an investigative news website. Why? Because it was critical of Duterte. The Duterte regime was headlined by its bloody war on drugs. Police were given free hand to shoot and kill anyone suspected of being involved in the drug trade. More than 6,200 people were killed in the last six years. The regime also crushed the illegal luxury car trade. It once bulldozed six million dollars worth of Porsches, Bentleys and McLarens. To be fair, not all of Duterte's policies were bad. He did manage to lift millions of people out of poverty, also improve the country's infrastructure. But selective, as history often is, chances are Duterte will be remembered for his war on drugs, on the Catholic Church and on the opposition. Critics call Duterte a human rights calamity, someone whose regime was a dress rehearsal for what may lie ahead. Marcos Jr., they fear, will rule with an iron fist. But you see, it's easy to write off a leader even before he's ended his first day in office. Even easier to let historical biases color your judgment. Marcos Jr. has not kept his policies under wraps. He has promised to tame inflation, also halve the cost of rice, boost production and strengthen food security. In fact, he has appointed himself as the country's agriculture minister. The president has also promised to boost jobs. What about foreign policy? Duterte openly courted China. He overlooked the Philippines' maritime row with Beijing. He also set aside the international ruling, the one that said China did not have historical claims over most of South China Sea. It came in 2016. Duterte put it aside. He cozied up to China because he wanted their money. At one point, he was ready to scrap a key military pact with the U.S. if it came to that. Marcos Jr. says his government will elevate ties with China but it will not compromise on sovereignty. Also, he'll be walking a quote-unquote very, very fine line. That's what he said. What about domestic affairs? What does Marcos Jr. mean for Manila? What does he bring to the table? For starters, experience. 
You see, this man has been office, in office almost continuously since the age of 23. He's prepared for presidency all his life. That aside, the Marcos Jr. regime is likely to be more of the same. He's likely to continue Duterte's policies. The two families are allies. In fact, Duterte's daughter, Sara Duterte, will be the new vice president of the country. So you won't see a radical change in Manila's policies. And that may not necessarily be a good thing. Weon is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.